Okay, guys, <clears throat> let us try these two, 7, 9, and 7, 10. 9. By the way, just because I'm choosing selected ones doesn't mean the others are not important. Um, I just don't have time to go through all of them, okay? 9 says, what distinguishes dissipative interactions from non-dissipative <coughs> ones? Okay, what is the answer to that? So try that. Okay, so dissipative interactions means that the energy is converted from coherent to uh, incoherent, meaning we can't use that energy again. It's dissipated. The ener energy still exists, but it exists in a form that you can't use it again. Whereas, so this is irreversible, okay? These are irreversible interactions. And non-dissipative ones are reversible, okay? So let's have a look at what the answer was. It says, non-dissipative interactions cause reversible changes. So, for example, you throw a tennis ball up, right? You throw a tennis ball up. Its uh, configuration state changes, and then you can get the, its potential energy increases, and you can get that potential energy back, right? So it's reversible. Or a spring, you compress a spring, and then you let it go, and then it comes back to its original position. That's reversible, and those are non dissipative interactions, whereas dissipative uh, means that we lose that energy. Um, from being able to use it again. We can't use that energy again. It becomes incoherent. Okay? So these are irreversible changes. Now let us look at the next question. Think of several interactions that occur in everyday life. Um, for each interaction, describe which category of energy is converted and to which energy it is converted. Okay, so some of these categories, for example, we know are kinetic energy, we've got potential energy, source energy, thermal energy. Okay, and it can be converted between these. Okay, so the example that they give here or in the solutions is a car. Okay, so let's see what's happening. In the interaction between a car and the gasoline in the fuel tank. Okay, let's think about what happens. How does a car actually move? Well, we've got source energy. We've got ES. Okay, that's the actual fuel. That's the petrol, the diesel, whatever it is, the gasoline. Okay, there's source energy. And this source energy... Ign uh, explodes inside the combustion chamber of the engine. As it explodes, right, it heats up the engine, so there's thermal energy that, that increases, and in a very simple way, it causes the piston to move. The piston causes basically uh, axles to, to rotate, and eventually through the gearbox, um, okay, this is not a it's not a, a lesson on vehicles, but it eventually causes the the wheels to move and the car to accelerate, uh, etc. Okay, to keep moving. So here we have kinetic energy. So that source energy is converted into thermal energy and kinetic energy, and then if if the car is going uphill then it is also converting it into gravitational potential energy. U gravitational potential energy. Okay? So try to think of how the energies are converted. The other example is if you rub your hands together. is a totally different example. You rub your hands together to warm them. Then there is source energy in your muscles. Okay? Right, there's your... There's your fingers, there's your bicep, okay, there's your another bicep, there's your fingers, 
Okay, and you rub them together. There's source energy inside our muscles. Okay, chemical source energy. It causes our muscles to contract, to activate, to function as we rub our hands together. So source energy gets converted into two things, into kinetic energy because our hands are moving and that that uh, motion causes is converted then into thermal energy by friction. Okay, hope you're getting the hang of it.